Rushawashi community, people that love to do small business and grow their business and be successful. And that's what I want to hit on tonight. Four steps formula for growing a pressure washing business. I'm going to talk a little bit about um, some cool stuff here that we will talk about. Um, I had a conversation with our mentors this morning, and so I will be hitting on that this morning that I hit on. And so this is what we will be talking about and helping you grow your business, not just start a business. If you haven't started, then obviously I want you to start. I also want you to start and grow a pressure washing business or whatever type of business that you are trying to grow. And so tonight, I just want to say, what's up? How is Mr. Big Rob? Um, how are you all doing tonight? What's going on? What's going on um, with you, I would like to hear a little feedback of what you are working on. Maybe what is something that you are looking forward to this weekend, but just let me know what you are um, looking forward to. What up, Mr. Owens? Um, here in Louisville, Kentucky. Is it Louisville, Kentucky? Louisville, Kentucky? It's Louisville, Kentucky. I know what it is, but it's always fun to see. And we see that you are on LinkedIn, and I finally got to um, start streaming over on LinkedIn, which is pretty cool. Um, and so that is awesome. Bill Guyman is on LinkedIn. Um, yes, I am on. I just figured out how to do it. And this is a tool that if you have over 150 connections, you can start doing some stuff on LinkedIn too, if you did not know that. So looking forward to our shirts. I finally ordered them. Can't wait to look snappy. That's awesome, Jesse. Hello, 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 Mr. Freddie, one of my young entrepreneurs. I'm going to have another young entrepreneur on in a couple of weeks or maybe next week. Um, and I'm excited to help young entrepreneurs. That's one thing that I always like doing. I obviously always like helping people. I like helping people start and grow their business. My goal is to help a thousand people make a hundred thousand dollars. And so with that, um, I love helping young entrepreneurs. I think that that next generation of young entrepreneurs can definitely, uh, do amazing and can, help people grow and that's my goal at the end of the day we got uh, big rob landed a 4600 square foot roof clean is there a formula to figure out how many gallons of four or five percent need it probably just a guesstimation would be my guess rigs and washing washers are selling everywhere and here's the deal guys this is kind of why i'm hitting on this four step of formula for growing a pressure washing business jason is always sending me people going out of business and and I do not want you to go out of business. Most of these people going out of business have super duper nice rigs. They have amazing equipment and that does not grow your business. I'm sorry to tell you, but that does not grow your business. That will not grow any business. I don't care if you're in junk removal. I don't care if you are in window cleaning. I don't care what you're in, but when we talk about equipment and we get all this equipment, we are the equipment junkies. That is not what grows your business. And so what grows your business is not equipment. Um, awesome how you give back to the community. Awesome. Live in rural Kansas, struggling to, in drumming up business. And sometimes if we live out in the middle of nowhere, you have to travel. You have to travel to two places that there is business. Um, you know, if we live out in BFE, we got to drive to not BFE and, and make that happen. A lot of guys who don't know what they're doing starting up giving us a bad name. I don't know if it's that. You got people that are selling a, a, a dream that they're backing it up with equipment sales and and that and that is a wet dream that's going to not be a good dream for most people. And so that is what happens when you go and you don't try to start a business and run it as a business and you don't read the book E-Myth and you run a business as a technician mindset, you are 
bout to fail is what's going to happen with you. So what's up, uh, Jason? Just on board it with Ashley today. Facebook starts this week. Time to make some money. Awesome with the Christmas lights. Um, let's see here right before we get started here. Hey, Jason from Mike Southern, Ontario, Power Washing, Ontario, Canada. Just starting out finally on your live here. Awesome, 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 awesome. So what is, what's the book you just mentioned? It is called E-Myth. E-Myth Revisited is what it's called. Um, it, it's, it's a great book. I, I don't know if I have it up here or not. Um, let's see, what's this one here? Nope. If you go to kingofpressurewash.com and hit the resource pages, um, and go down to the bottom of the resource page, um, and it'll say books and there's all the books that I recommend. Um, and it's under the books there. It's called E-Myth Revisited is what it's called. Um, but yeah, um, a great book. I highly recommend it. It's one of my top books that I recommend. E-Myth book is amazing. Yes, for sure. So let's talk about what, what, how do we, what are the four step formula to growing a, a pressure washing business? Step one is figuring out our systems. Rather, that is a system. And, and I'm not just talking starting a pressure washing business. I'm talking actually growing and scaling a pressure washing business. I'm talking about getting it to, you know, a half a million dollars, or maybe, you know, maybe you're at 50 and we're trying to get you to a hundred thousand and how we can help you get to that next level. That's what I'm hitting. That's what I want to hit on tonight. Um, actually I had a person that, um, was on the, my mentorship call this morning and it was really cool to see, um, that person, how he has grown in the last two years. Um, and, and, and it's amazing to watch him grow. And this was a person that, you know, he didn't have, he wasn't educated. He wasn't, um, he didn't have everything given to him. Um, he was, a lot of people would look at this, his job as the bottom of the job line, right? Um, not very high up at all. And so when he was telling his story this morning, he kind of got into it more depth and we kind of broke it down a little bit. It got me thinking of what are the four things that make you grow and what are the four things that either going to some things that might make you grow or it might make you fail. And it depends on you and how you handle those things, rather how you grow. So before we get started here, I want you to write down some of the things that you think, what are the four steps to make you grow? What, what are some things that you think are some steps to growth in a business? Um, and, and I'm asking these questions because I just kind of want to see what your which way you're thinking and maybe how I can help you um, see through, maybe maybe you come up with a better idea um, and, and maybe I, you know, and I like it. Um, Micah, Micah says marketing. I agree 100%. That is definitely one of the steps in growth for business. What other, what other um, things do you think that are important for growth in a business. You know, when I first started my pressure washing business, I wasn't very good at speaking. I wasn't very good at sales. I wasn't very good at um, marketing. I wasn't very good at networking. I wasn't very good at Google Analytics and online presence, but I figured out how to get to a million dollars, right? And you can do the same. And so these are definitely some good answers that we got here. Marketing, push, for five-star reviews, right? These are all good. Delegating. This one here is a really good one. How, who, not how. This is something that as a business owner is probably one of the hardest things right here. Who, not how. How, how can we put somebody else in charge to um, do the work better than what you can do? And, and, and that is an, an amazing feat when we can find those people and you will see how much you will grow and how you will be successful when we put the right people in the right seats of the car, right? It, it is like just getting a car, right? It is one of those things. And so, you know, one of the things that I, I had said that when we try to start that growth mode, obviously we need to marketing. We got to figure out our systems of how to market. We need to figure out, hey, if I put in a dollar here, 
I can get $5 out. If I put in $100 here, I can get um, $700 out. So a return on investment of seven times, right? And so we got to figure out how do we get the um, the number of leads coming in? How What systems are we using to get those leads coming in? Are we putting out yard signs every weekend? Are we... Um, are we doing um, AdWords? Are we doing Facebook? Are we doing network marketing? Are we doing BNI? Are we doing going to go after commercial and we're going to hit the, the, the commercial side of things and we're going to hit the apartment associations and we're going to hit um, um, the HOAs and, and facility managers and all of that awesome stuff to be able to grow and scale, right? These are some things that we have to think about when we're trying to grow and scale. This isn't one of those things that, oh, I'm just going to do nothing and the phone's going to ring. It doesn't happen that way. I wish it happened happen that way, but it doesn't happen that way. And so what, um, so these are some things that we have to, so what are some things that have helped you grow so far in the marketing realm? I'd like to see some of your answers. What have you, what has been working well for you? Um, I know some people do very well on signs. Um, I did signs. It worked well. I did very well with AdWords. I did very well with my Google, my business back then. Um, you know, and, and it's not just one thing when we start getting in growth and scaling mode, usually there's not one thing that's going to be amazing, right? There's going to be a couple things. And so those were my couple of things. What were some of your couple of things and how have they helped you? Right. And so what, it, what, what really kind of helps, um, us is when we diversify, right? We don't want to put all our eggs in one basket. I've seen so many people put all their eggs in SEO, and then Google does this Google change like they just did for GMB that has been screwing a lot of people. And guess what? Now you've lost everything. Um, there's a guy that I know that a lot of people know that lost his Google My Business and had over 600 five-star reviews. Do you think he's lost some money with the, with it when that was shut down? Absolutely. Absolutely have lost a lot of money for this. And so there is definitely things that we can do to grow and scale. And we have to think about how do we grow and scale? How do we get these things and how do we put these things in place so that way we can grow and keep moving? How's Miss Pink doing? Um, and so the reason why I'm asking questions is, is I'm trying to get you all to kind to participate. And so that also helps me with YouTube and Facebook to get more people. And so that's why I'm asking questions. And if you like answering questions, I like when you all converse on here also. Um, but that's what, the only thing for me has been signs. They haven't been a great, but they have paid for themselves, just um, starting to pay for ads. And that's, a, you know, that's something that we have to think about. What, what works best for us? You know, what is the best um, thing to get? Um, what is the best ladder to get? It, uh, ladder. Um, billboards. That's a good, billboards and radio ads for washing are blowing up around here. Nice. That's good to know. Um, you know, I know that works for some people. I know it doesn't work for others and having them in the right place, putting more signs with a uh, different service and they call, I can tell, um, that I'm a, that I'm a pressure washing service. Um, love giving back to you. If it means answering questions, I'll do it. Awesome. Um, one thing that has worked for me in my area is regular posting in Facebook groups and sales. And this is something that is definitely a way to do it, you know, but we have to be consistent. We have to be prolific. We have to be um, um, relentless when we're doing that. You know, it's not we post in the group one time and that's all we get. We have to stay making sure that we are um, consistent, relentless and prolific. Man, we, we're, we're hammering down on that stuff. Um, so that is definitely a awesome thing there. Um, how you doing, Mr. Eugene? What's up, J Dog, Mr. Martin? How's Martin doing? Um, I know, I know what works here best here in Lexington. I'm new at this. I'm only experienced word of mouth. I've done. I haven't done a lot of marketing, you know. And, and that's the thing, right? I, I I was talking to a guy that's actually one of your competitors down there in Lexington, and we were talking about what grows and how to grow SEO and how to grow 
Um, you know, he's not showing up on Google Maps, but he's showing up on Google and, you know, but he has a customer list of probably four or 5,000 people that he's done work for. And, you know, I'm like, dude, you, you have a gold mine. You're not even using that gold mine. You're not even using your customer list. I see so many people that have been in business for a long time and have a customer list of two, three, 5,000 customers and they won't send a text. They're not sending emails out. They're not calling that list list and and that's a gold mine man that's something that will help us and this is what we have to do to scale we have to get our referral rates we have to get our returning customers up if our returning customers it stays at you know less than 10 20 percent we're going to struggle to be able to keep growing um, we want our return customers to be high and and this is some things that we can do for marketing to make sure that we're doing that number two thing that we need to do is get our systems in place we need systems on how we answer the phone we need systems on how we do the cleaning so that way you're not the only one in the business we can start hiring people and putting them in the right places you know like i was saying jeremy was a, literally a garbage man he was on the back of a garbage truck throwing garbage in a garbage truck in two years he did and so first year he did a little not quite like 60 70 thousand and year two he did over four hundred thousand and year three he's going to do a million dollars he'll be real close to a million dollars this year and so what were some steps that made him do better right and so one of them is stretching a little bit right are you he bought a big building, bought a $600,000 building. Do you think that stretches you a little bit? you think that makes you go to work a little bit more? Absolutely it does. And so those are some things that will help you grow and, and get to the next level. I, I see a lot of times we get scared and we don't want to do things. And, oh, look at the stock market. And, oh, look at that. And look at that. You know, there's nothing you can change on that side of things. The only thing you can change is what you're doing. You know, do you, well, you might have to... You, tweak your skill of doing something else you might you might not you know i remember when um the the pandemic hit right everybody was worried to death about their business and people had record years and pressure washing and christmas lights why because everybody was scared to death they wasn't going on vacations and so they took care of their houses and so people had record years in christmas site people had record years in um, pressure washing and so we can use these things to help us grow and get to where we want to go at right and so these are things that we have to do to make this happen so we need to make sure that we are doing what we need to do and getting stuff in um, in a routine or a process, whether it's a process of how we answer the phone. Um, so that way, every time the phone rings, it happens this way. Every time you show up on the job, it happens this way. Every time you do the job, it happens, bam, bam, bam. This is what we do. This is how we make sure that we don't get callbacks. This is how we make sure that that customer is happy and giving you five-star reviews. And we're asking for those five-star reviews. Those are all marketing strategies that we're doing so we can keep growing our business. You know, and, and what the next thing is, number three is, is setting premium pricing. I see so many people are so scared of premium pricing. Premium pricing is not a four letter word, I promise you. It is what will help you grow, it will help you scale, it will help you get where you need to go out. Um, outsold the $99 guy again, going to focus on selling processes and the overcoming objections, right? Um, Jason um, had a big competitor down there, bigger than him he thought, right? Had two, three trucks, and wasn't making nothing. Um, and, and that's not the goal, right? The goal is is to make profit. Jason's going to do over 200000 um, by himself as him and his wife grow the business. Um, and they don't do it on cheap pricing. They do not do it on the $99 pricing. $99 pricing is not what's going to grow and scale your business. In fact, it's going to probably make your business go foobar at the end of the day. So it is definitely something that we have to make sure of what we're doing to grow and scale it. Scheduling posting is high five. <laughs> awesome. Um, it is definitely something that works well. It is definitely, I recommend it a, a lot. So then that way you can definitely keep your business going and not have to worry about it as we do it. Wow. Facebook, that HOA deal sounds amazing. Um, 
when, usually when I post in city groups, I get flagged for going against community guidelines. How do I get around that? We don't go posting in these groups. Oh, I'm a pressure washer. I'm a pressure washer. I'm a pressure washer. We go build network in there, and we tell people that when people ask about other things, we tell them what who's the best of it, and we build relationships, and we use it as networking. Just like LinkedIn, we don't be like, um, I'm a pressure washer, I'm a pressure washer, I'm a pressure washer. That's not going to get seen. Um, that's not going to get seen at all. And so we have to give value. We have to build relationships. And, you know, they say your net worth, is your net worth. And so the bigger you make your network, it will be the more money you make. And so in these Facebook groups, we're building our network. We're building people around us and we're telling them about how good they are and how cool they can be used. And there is some questions that we could ask in these groups to try to get people to, to, to respond. So that way, when you do say you're a pressure, and you're not saying I'm a pressure washer, come pressure washing, right? You might just do a little video clip that's just a cool video clip, right? People love of watching other people work people do not like to work but they like to watch other people work and so this is how we can use that so we can grow it and keep it going through that way um, it all starts with a mindset if you don't believe in yourself no one else will and this is so true this would probably be one of the four or two if you don't believe you can do it and if you don't believe you can sell premium pricing and if you don't believe that you can do it you're right you can't do it um and and, and it is so important that get having a positive mindset is definitely something that is amazing you know it, and it's one of those things of people will be like jason is it really just about having a positive mindset and that's how i can grow a business yes it is really that's that because if you don't believe that you're worth three hundred dollars an hour well that customer also don't believe that you're worth three hundred dollars an hour and so if you believe that you're worth um five hundred dollars an hour that customer will believe that you're worth five hundred dollars an hour now we're not telling them that but that you have to believe it in yourself and if you if you're if you're buying out of your wallet you're never going to be successful because i guarantee you you don't live in a half a million dollar house like they do you don't drive the hundred thousand dollar tesla like they do you don't you don't do all that stuff. And so quit buying out of your wallet. Start buying out of their wallet, right? How do they think? Go do things that what they might do. And yes, it might put you in an uncomfortable situation. And yes, it might put you in a situation that you might not be able to do much. But just go do a little bit of it just to see how, you know, a lot of it comes down to service, right? You know, is there something special about the, the $10,000 purse versus the, the $100 purse, no, there ain't nothing special about it. It's probably made of plastic just like the other one is. It just got a logo on it that makes it worth ten grand. And so these are things that we have to think about of how, you know, and, and it's not about the service. It's about the mindset of how they built that around that purse, right? And so that is definitely true when we're dealing with this. Um, that's a conversation going on. What's up, Truth Seeker? How are you doing? My yard signs are just basic. That's all you want. Service and phone number. Has anybody had any luck with different versions? Like exterior cleaning and phone number. No. Pressure washing, phone number. That's it. I've done house washing. I've actually tested power washing versus pressure washing. Those two were pretty much equal. Um, but pressure washing versus any other thing you're 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 thinking of um you are going down the the pipeline too far most people when they call you they're looking for pressure washing they're not looking for house washing they're not looking for roof cleaning they're looking for a pressure washer that is what they're looking for um, and that is how that happens nine months of washing sidewalks and curbs three hundred sixty thousand dollars and if i wash a hundred thousand homes i would make 1.4 million dollars in just nine months and somebody asked actually a question on facebook or youtube um how can you really make a hundred thousand dollars in wisconsin and yes you can even do it in wisconsin because you only have a short season again we're back to pride we're back to the whole part of making sure that we are doing premium pricing that we are doing the things that we need to do so we can grow and keep us going. Had a one-star review from a guy who said, I never came to watch this property. 
He has he was never scheduled on our books and even asked him to call so things can be figured out. It's a bogus one star review. How do I get rid of it? Well, first off is you try to reach out to him and see if you can get a hold of him. Second off, you you tell your side of the story. You tell him, hey, I never came to the property. I never did this. Um, and, and tell your story side of it. If he won't change it, you tell your story of it. Having one star reviews are not a bad thing. Um, it, having all five hundred, having lots of five star reviews and no one star reviews, sometimes can be a bad thing because they're like, "Did you buy these reviews? Um, prove that you didn't buy all those reviews, right?" And so these are some things that you just tell your story, you be professional about it, and you tell your side of the story, and that's how you um, take care of that. Some guys around here are ten cents a square foot for a house wash. How do they eat? Good question. They go out of business. Is what happens. Um, that's why we don't worry about our competitors. Um, biggest job, roof job yet, $3,500 in Florida. One residential roof, follow the process, premium pricing for premium work. Amazing. And so you can do the same. That That's a really good strategy. Taking notes. Awesome. Yep. The real answer to people are in my area are cheap is... I don't value myself enough to charge premium prices. A lot of it is, is they don't have the mindset. They don't have the knowledge that they can do, you, that they're just, that they're going to put themselves out of business. Um, that's what it comes down to. They don't know that they're going to put themselves out of business. Um, if you want to go out of business, then go cheap um, and, and go that way. You know, I got people that say, should I charge premium pricing right out of the get go? And my answer is yes, you should. Um, because I hear a lot of people, I'll do, I'll, I'll raise my prices next year. Well, you can't raise your prices enough to keep you in business is the problem. So that's why we want to make sure that we are charging enough so we can get it. Martin pressure washing services, pressure washing service and phone number. If you want to waste money in signs, put painting and your phone number on it. Don't be talking about Savannah and them. They're killing it with pressure, crit painting. They just figured out how to do it better. <laughs> Any reason to use verbiage like soft washing in ads as well, or just stick with pressure washing? Is it better to say soft washing for house washing services? Thanks in advance. Again, unless you're in Florida and people know about soft washing, most people are not looking up soft washing. Very few are looking up soft washing. They are all looking up pressure washing um i did an 80 foot sidewalk for 150 dollars and got a 25 tip that's like 62 cents a square foot and that's cheap right that i mean i would be more than that because that's about below my minimum and so you know i do have a minimum and there's a reason why i have a minimum now do i probably lose some jobs because i have a minimum maybe but it also is how i sell it too right um, I actually had, I was doing a, a uh, if you have any questions, you can ask down in here too. Um, I was, I was, um, I was going to, I was testing my yard signs actually. And I was testing pressure washing versus house washing, pressure washing versus different things. Um, and the phone call came across and what, he was like, um, I just need my porch cleaned. And he's like, well, you know, I do you have anything else you need cleaned? Um, you, you know, because, you know, and it was a him hauling around and he's like, no, I just need my porch cleaned. Instead of saying, yes, we can clean that porch for you for $300 and not say this is my minimum. I would have just said, yes, I can clean that porch for $300. When would you like to schedule? Right. I'm confident. I'm, I'm moving on to the point. I'm, and you know what? If you don't want to pay $300, he's too cheap to pay my minimum. But I'm I'm not going to say that was my minimum. I'm just going to say that's my price. I'm not going to go, well, you know, that falls under my minimum and that's going to be $300. Who can, you know, hey, this is going to be $300. You know what? I might be making 50 cents a square foot. Who cares? That's what my minimum is. That's what my minimum charge is. That's how I'm going to keep it and keep me going and keep me getting those more expensive jobs. Um, everyone click the like button for the algorithm. Yep, I'd appreciate that too. Leave comments, everything. Um, wow, that's expensive, ma'am. That's our minimum service charge. Or not even say that. Be like, ma'am, you're too cheap to you're too cheap for my customers. You know, this is my normal customers. This is how I've gotten all my five star reviews. 
You know, that's just kind of how we deal with cheap people sometimes. Um, that sidewalk landed $1,875 house wash and driveway. It's awesome. Steve Wyatt, how are you doing, man? We just landed a $1,200 job today. High five. That's awesome. High five. Um, we just hit the $800 to $900 days a few times, but one of our short-term goal was $1,000 a day. We finally got one and expected by or exceeded by $200. Again, that's high five, man. That's a great goal to set. That's a great goal to hit, right? And next goal is is to do it five days in a row, right? And get to five grand in a week. Um, and then, you know, we just keep, you know, can we do $1,500 a day? Can we do a $2,000 day? And yes, guys, you can hit $2,000 days. You want to hear something even crazier? You can hit $2,500 days. You can hit $3,000 days. Um, but... Write these goals down. Write a goal down. Hey, I want to hit a hundred, a thousand dollars a day. And then write the next goal right below that. I want to hit a fifteen hundred dollar day. I want to hit a three thousand dollar day. I've done five grand a day. I've done lots of money before. I've seen lots of money be made. Um, Jason was ecstatic. He even made a thousand dollars an hour. Was there like four hours, four or five hours? I don't remember, but it was a thousand dollars an hour. Um, you know, and, and so there is things that we can do that write it down, make sure you set your goals and it's amazing what you can do at the end of the day. Before I do the job, I just tell my customers if they can leave an honest review, even if it's a one star will help me so I can look to see what I need to work on. So good or bad, it helps. Um, any particular site you like? Or recommend for Christmas lights. Yes, ChristmasLights.io. Um, go there. It'll say Buy Lights, and it'll take you to another website, and then you buy me a cup of coffee. I do recommend that one, not just because I'm an affiliate for it, but that's where I would buy my lights from. Um, they they sell UL rated equipment. That's not cheap equipment. Um, it is UL, so that way you're keeping everything safe, and that way if something ever happens. You can use the UL side of things to make sure that you um, are being safe. You can go cheaper, but it's not going to be UL rated. It's not going to be near as good as quality, and that's why I like the UL side of things. Had another pressure washer cuss me out for putting signs in front of his neighborhood. Yank my sign, no problem. He is going to put himself out of business. Yeah. Um, how many times do you follow up on a lady that's on the fence um, and how long in between? A lot. I'm going to keep following up. I'm going to, you know, I followed up um, seven times within 14 days. That was between phone calls, emails, text, um, and I hammered down, you know, and I didn't stop at 14 days either. I kept going, but seven times within 14 days. Um, and, and so it is definitely important to make sure we are following up. Following up is the best thing you can do. If we don't follow up, you might as well just light your money on fire. Just light it on fire. Because following up is what's going to make you grow and it's going to make you be, um, it's going to make you grow by following up. $5,000 days, five hours. Um, a $5,000 day in five hours. Yeah, so he made $1,000 an hour. Can you make $1,000 an hour? Who in here, how many people in here have made $500 an hour. Um, put how much is the most you ever made per hour um, in here. I like. I want to hear what you all have to say. If I get this HOA community just to watch the sidewalks and curbs, that's 10 houses for $3,000 a day, $15,000 a week. Amazing. What about yard signs for Christmas lights? What would you put on them? I would put on there either Christmas light installers, um, um, we hang holiday lights, something along those lines. Keep up the good work, F bomb. A thousand dollars an hour, hundred and fifty dollars an hour. I made twelve hundred dollars per hour. And, you know, and and the reason why I'm asking other people is just not because Jason says that he's putting a bunch of blue bunch of smoke out there. It can be done, and you can do it. Like I said earlier, Jeremy De Jeremy Maine is literally a garbage man. He literally picked off garbage off of a garbage truck, put it in the garbage truck, 
And within two years, he's grown it. In two years, he got his business to $400,000. And this year, he's going to do a million dollars in three years. And so it can be done, you know, and, and he had to do things to make it happen, but it can be done. You know, a lot of times we think that, oh, this can't be done. It's not my area. You don't understand. There's too much competition here. I can give you all the excuses in the world. And I, honestly, you can give me all the excuses in the world. I've heard them all. I've heard all the excuses. Excuses are just that. They're an excuse. You know, they are a reason why you're not doing it. They are a mindset of why you're not doing it. And so that's why it is important that we do work and hit and make it happen, right? $286 an hour, $400 and 45 minutes. That's awesome, right? That's a reason why we, we, we are able to do this stuff. This is how, you know, and a lot of times people are like, well, you, you're, you're price gouging. You're, and I hear it a lot in Christmas lights, a lot in Christmas lights, right? Well, you just charge too much. Well, you know what? There's a lot to it. There's a lot to pressure washing, right? You know, you got a lot of risk. You can damage stuff. You can break stuff. You can screw up stuff. And so it is definitely something that we have to think about when we're pricing, right? We have to pay for marketing. We have to pay for all the insurances. We got to pay for gas. We got to pay for chemicals. We got to pay for breakdowns. We got to pay for equipment. We got to pay, you know, there's a lot of stuff that comes out of this stuff. And so that's why we have to charge premium pricing. That's why it is important to charge premium pricing because if we're not charging premium pricing, then at the end of it, it's going to hurt us. Um, I'm in the pressure washing capital of the world. New guys coming in every day, going out just as fast. And, and you know, and he's going to do $200,000, $250,000 with him and his wife doing this. You know, and, and, and now, does he work hard? Absolutely. He never, you know, he's always thinking about business. Um, Jason Hefner is always thinking about business, how he can do something better, how he can go Facebook or um, LinkedIn Live, how he can go Facebook Live, how he can um, do do something, right? Maybe make a magnet, maybe do something, try different things. Um, and, and he never stopped trying to think of different things. It's always trying to think of how can I do it better? How can I get marketing better? He's not thinking of what's my next piece of equipment. That's not what he's thinking about. What he's thinking about, and he's not thinking about what's my next chemical I need to buy. He's got a whole shelf full of chemicals that he never he bought and never used. He's thinking of how can I get the next customer? How can I get the next customer? What do I need to do to get the next customer? How can I be better at customer service? What are some things I can do to be better at customer service? What are things that I can show to be better at customer service, right? Because at the end of the day, we're a customer service business that's just so happened to do pressure washing. He's not thinking of, man, you know what? I need that new piece of equipment. Otherwise, I can't grow my business. I can't grow my business because I ain't got that new piece of equipment. I need to buy me a whole new rig. I need a new $15,000, $20,000 rig because I can't grow my business because I don't have a $20,000 rig. Um, I promise you, that's not what Jason's thinking about. Jason is thinking about what he needs to do for marketing, what video he needs to make, what um, what YouTube or not YouTube, what Facebook Live he needs to do, what flyer door hanger he needs to make, what EDM piece he needs to make, what he can do with his website, what can he do to get his five star reviews. This is what Jason thinks about all day long even while he's at the firehouse. And yes, he's a full-time firefighter. So he works, 50, or um, what is it, 57 hours, 56 hours at the firehouse a week. And he's still going to do two hundred dollars to $250,000 in pressure washing and Christmas lights. And so it can be done. It's not, it's not rocket science. It's nothing special about Jason. If you've met Jason, you know he's not special. Um, and so he's special in his own way, right? And so, and so that is something that you have to think about when we're dealing with this. You know, he's thinking about, oh, Saturday morning, um, I need to go put out 25, 50 yard signs. Oh, it's at the end of the day, it's in Florida. It's 95 degrees with 150% um, percent humidity. Oh, I got to go do my five around. Oh, you know what? I'm a little bit early, so I'm going to do 20 around. 
right? I'm always thinking about what can I do to get my marketing out? What can I do to keep cranking my marketing out? What can I do to test my marketing? Hey, does Facebook work ads? Well, let's try it. Let's test it. Well, that didn't work. Let's do it. Google ads. Oh, that's working. Let's put more money into it, right? These are some things. These are all the things that are going through Jason's head. Guarantee you it's not about his equipment. The only time it was about his equipment is when he was in his old trailer and he would not pull up to a job um, because he was so embarrassed of his trailer. It looked so crappy. And so that was the only time he worried about equipment. And it wasn't because he did it. It was because he had crappy equipment and it looked like crap. But he didn't care. He kept going. He kept doing the things he needed to do. He kept following the process. When you follow the process, things happen. When you follow the process, it will make your business grow. And following the process is, when you follow my process, it has very little to do with equipment. Very little minute has to do with equipment it's all about marketing it's all about getting systems in place it's all about how you answer your phone you know that's the hardest thing i got to get people to do is to answer their freaking phone um after they get it ringing first you got to get it ringing and then second you got to answer your phone because if you don't answer your phone there's no use of getting it ringing in the first place My other business, I made $350 in 15 minutes. That's hooking up, driving one mile, and unhooking. Um, equipment doesn't make the phone ring. I have a 10-gallon a minute and an 8-gallon a minute backup. But the phone does not ring because he has 18-gallon a minute per pressure, for two pressure washers. And he understands the process. He understands the system. There's a reason why I put things in systems in play is so that you understand and so you do it every time. It's one of those things when you get into shortcuts and you're not doing your five arounds. You quit putting out your yard signs. You, you do things that hurt you and not keep you moving forward. Yard signs going out after football tonight. Awesome. How many are you going to put out, um, Tristan? 50 yard signs. Um, looking at 400 in Facebook ads and 400 in yard signs for marketing budget monthly. Um, what would you recommend to buy monthly for yard signs? I would probably do $800 in yard signs and nothing in Facebook ads. My personal opinion for pressure washing. Christmas lights is a little bit different. Um, I would, that's just what I would do. I, I bet if you put out 100 signs a week, well, that's um, a little bit more than $900. Um, $800, so you'll, you put out 50 yard signs a week. I bet you'll get a ton more work that way. Um, educating a customer on your process is a must. A lot of customers think they were rolling up on their property using a Ryobi power washer. So they just justify a $500 with no clue. Holy moly, he's doing it. He is on the hustle bus. <laughs> Um, roof job. It took one hour and 15 minutes. I charged them $2,200 and I would have not asked for that price. If I never found Jason YouTube channel, I live in Stockton, California. It, it's, it's all about asking, you know, if you don't ask, you won't get it. That is a guarantee. You have to ask for it to get the premium pricing. My Google profile got suspended immediately. Um, I'm now in the back and forth game with Google, slow and uninformed on their end. Yeah, it sucks. I don't, I, I don't even know what to tell you, bro. Um, I spent tons of money on advertising my first two years. Now I don't advertise at all, and I stay busy. Again, using the referral system, using your um, your past customers that they're amazing what they can do for you. Do you think John V Facebook ads? Work for him to run it for two weeks. You can give it a try. That's all I'm going to say. Um, good luck. Um, was thinking 20 tonight, 20 tomorrow. Okay. How about 25 tonight and 25 tomorrow? And who else is going to do 25 tonight and 25 tomorrow night? Who else was willing to put out 50 signs in the next two days? Um, and see what happens to your phone if it rings or not. Got you eighty dollars. Yeah, who else is gonna put out yard signs? Jason, I, Hefner, how many yard signs are you gonna put out this weekend? Um, spent about four thousand dollars for a company to do marketing and only made a thousand dollars. About to redo everything over, and that's the thing, guys. The reason what got me in the love of marketing is this right here. 
I spent four thousand. I've spent almost five grand um, to build a website and SEO, and my phone was just going to blow up. It didn't blow up, um, and it didn't do nothing. It didn't even ring, and so I was like, I paid this four hundred dollars. I paid this five grand. And you said my phone was going to ring. And there was all these people on all these boards saying, this person is amazing. It will make your phone blow up. And it didn't blow up. Um, so what I did is is I invested in myself and I went and learned how to do it myself. Um, and that's how I got my phone to ring. Now I teach you all how to do it too. So that's why I do so much of the teaching wise is because I have been down this road. I have been in his shoes right here, and it's not an awesome thing. And that's the thing. You might go to another company that's going to promise you the world, and there is no guarantee of it either. And so that's what sucks about. And that's why you. That's why I love marketing, and that's why marketing is something that I geek out on. I learn. I you know when I started my pressure washing business. I did not read. I hated reading. Reading is of the devil, you know, um, as uh, Adam Sandler says. Um, Mama, uh, what was it? Uh, she's of the devil. Reading was of the devil for me, you know. I couldn't understand what I read. I still can't understand what I read. But I learned to start liking marketing and love of marketing, and I can't get enough of marketing. So I'm always reading it. Like even in my pressure washing group, I just posted a thing that I read, and it talks about Google suspensions, and it talks about the new update that just came through Google. Um, just like September 7th, there was a new update, and I posted it in there. Um, why? Because it's, it's, it's important to understand how this stuff changes. You know, there's no one way, you know, the way I started and the way it is now is completely different. You know, there's been so many birds and so many um, animal updates from Google that a lot of the stuff when I started don't work anymore. Um, and so that is why we have to um, keep us um, in, informed. And I, it's why I push marketing so hard because marketing is definitely something we have to think about. Hey, side question. What is the best surface cleaner for the eight gallon a minute? I really um, like the Whisper Wash um, 19 inch or 20 inch with the four tip bar. Um, you can walk pretty fast with it and you're not walking really slow with it. Um, I got 150 signs, so I will put out at least 50 this weekend. Awesome, Jack. 50 signs. I'm putting my signs out. I'm booked. I'm booking into October. I need to step up the marketing. Um, you're going to have to step up your prices too. Sounds like, um, if you're going to do any Christmas lights, uh, I got only 20 signs left for the month, but they are going tomorrow night for the weekend. Awesome. Get those next signs in 50 sign challenge accepted. Awesome. I love 50 yard sign the challenge. Uh, do you recommend trying to retrieve your signs from local zoning when they pilk them? I don't even worry about them. I go buy more and stick more out so they can pluck them too. Um, no way I'd pay John V to run Facebook ads. That's just me. I wouldn't either, but I'm not going to. That's not my business to say that. Um, foosball is for the devil. Foosball, that's what it was. Waterboy is the movie. It was a great movie. I love Adam Sandler. What do you think about hydraulic ball valve? Um, I really don't care for them. I would do the D10 ball valve is the one that I like. The hydraulic ball valve, it's so bulky and heavy and it sucks. You'll wait, you're just wasting your money. It's called a D10 ball valve. I have, if you go to pressurewashhelp.com slash store, I have it in there or you can go anywhere and buy it. But the D10 ball valve is way better than that hydraulic ball valve. Um, 50 signs sounds good. Thank you. I'm new and have a helper available. So, Looking to market enough to keep him busy. Yep. D10 valve. Much smoother. That's what I said, too. Um, does anyone know if sodium hydroxide works as good as hot? Um, I don't know. That's a good question, George. I seen you post it earlier. And I don't know if it still works as good as it does when it's fresh. I'm going to guess probably not. But. I'm just guessing. I could be completely wrong on it. Do a test. I need more signs. I just ordered 100 washing and 100 lights. 
Super late. Mr. TC's, how's he doing, man? Um, does know if sodium works good when it cools off? Yeah, we just hit on that question. Um, what up, T? So, my landscapers laid my signs on the back, and I stood it. Landscapers laid my sign on the ground. I stood it back up after a clean cut. One thing that keeps them from coming down is if you use the Guyman pole and put them up on your poles. That'll help keep those signs from coming down. Where do I get the D10 valve? I need it ASAP. Any pressure washing store will have it. Um, rather, you go to pressure washing store. Like I say, I've got a link on it to the Amazon store. That a link on it there. As long as it's still there, they kind of come and go on there. Um, but any pressure washing store will have a D10 for it. Um, one place I like to order, like if I'm ordering stuff online, I'll go to PressureTech.com. PressureTech.com. Um, they'll have it. They're usually they might be a little bit more, but they're quick on it, getting it back out and getting it to you. Jason, what is RoofMax? Advertising everywhere. Please explain. Thank you. So it's a different type of chemical that they will spray on the roof. I don't know exactly how it works. I do know a guy that uses it. It's it's more organic based, I believe. It doesn't clean as quick. Um, it takes time for it to go away, but it does work. Just closed on a bunch of cool stuff. On a bunch of stuff. Awesome. Who's this WW guy? Wild Wild West. Um, made my R made my own RO fed water pep pole system. My tap water is 348. That's pretty high. And out of the tube, it is six. Nice. That's suitable number for window cleaning. I've read and heard that even at times zero will leave spots, but for a five hundred fifty dollar build, I think that's really com that's good. Yeah, I mean, usually I didn't start getting callbacks till I was getting up into like the 25 and 30 and even 40 is when you start getting callbacks. Um, so if it's coming out at 6 from 300, because we're about 250 to 275 here in the Cincinnati area, and I just use the DI tank. And the DI tank, I would use it for six to eight weeks and then just change out the, the stuff on it. Dental office, Smoky Bones, a 4,900 square foot home, another 2,700 square foot home. High five. That's nice closing, guy, man. Um, yeah, that's pretty awesome. That's good. Actually, I didn't high five you because I turned it down. High five. High five. High five. I love, I love celebrating other people's wins. I love celebrating my wins, but I love celebrating other people's wins. Um, it's a good thing to do. If you're not celebrating your own wins, it's a good thing to do is to celebrate your own win. Um, if you want a book to read about it, it's called The Gap in the Game by Dan Sullivan. Um, great book. I would highly recommend it. It's called The Gap in the Game. It's The Gap in the Game, G-A-I-N, Game, by Dan Sullivan. Great book. I really like that book. Um, in, the winter, in the winter months, I'll be in your area. Can I call you? Um, for work with you. <laughs> can I call, can I work with you or for you? Um, yeah, for sure. Um, Jason might need a helper. Jason Hefner, he's not too far, I don't think, from Tank. Um, might need a helper. Um, yes. So go help him. Go help her. Go help anybody. Um, go make some money in Florida. Um, where it's warm. I'd like to come to Florida where it's warm too because I hate cold weather. Anybody else here hate cold weather? Um, and it's just around the corner. The other day it was down, it was like 65 of the high and I was freezing. I was like, what's this crap? 65 degrees and in the high of it. Um, that's stupid. Um, but I'm just rambling right now. So um, I'm actually going to be going and doing some more video shooting. I've, I've shot a bunch of video. I've downloaded a lot of that video right now. Um, so I will start having more videos coming out. Make sure you're watching those videos. I appreciate it. Commenting, liking on those videos. Um, and I will be doing a video this week on uh, deck cleaning and even staining. Yes, I'm going to be stupid enough to stain this deck, but I'm doing it for you guys. I'm going to do the gruesome work for you guys of cleaning a deck and staining a deck. Um, and so it, it gives me video. I've never done a 
a video on it. I'm going to use a couple different products. I know I got sodium hydroxide. I know I got a house wash mix and I'm going to use, I think I can use sodium. I think I got sodium potassium. So the deck's like 60 feet long. So I got plenty of area to, to do some test spots to see which one cleans better, which one cleans better. We got all these deck gurus out here pushing all the 25 different chemicals, but let's just see which one cleans better. Now cleaning it for a deck ceiling job is a little bit different, but it is something I'm hoping it's not, I'm hoping it's a, a, a regular color and not just clear because that kind of sucks but if it is it is um jason if you get anywhere in new england let me know i will come find you yeah i don't make i will make it up that way sometime or another uh, my goal is to hit all 50 states which i know it ain't in new england but we'll be getting close to it um for sure get the like buttons up um so with that um go check out king of pressure um, and join, I have a membership that we do a membership call every Monday, um, Monday night, we talk about marketing and how to grow your business. Um, we, it's a great call. Um, Rhode Island, man, Rhode Island, that's not new England. <laughs> um, uh, and so, um, and I'm never was good with geography either. So don't worry about it. <laughs> um, but um, it is definitely something that we talk about this past weekend. We talk or this past Monday, we talked about how to get HOAs, where to find them and how to get those HOAs. And so that is what we talked about this past weekend. This next week, we're going to talk about how to go in and talk to um, walk in on properties and, and, and how to deal with those types of people uh, walking in. Um, we are small, but beautiful. Um, we're a little tight up here. Thumbs up 65 degrees. That's stupid. That is stupid, man. I agree. Um, got to build signs and load up. Have a good night, everyone. Um, but if also the Donovan and I will be having another training coming up in October. So for Christmas lights, if you, um, it's a Christmas lights and a pressure washing class in, in North Carolina, Raleigh, North Carolina. Um, it's not too late to start Christmas lights. I know I push Christmas lights a lot, but they're amazing. You will be very profitable and they make a lot. They will make you a lot of money. Um, and so um, last last time I had a guest speaking on marketing um, was Chris or uh, Liam. And he talked about follow ups. This will be our special guest right here is um, Chris will be talking on sales um, and how kind of his follow or how he sells. Um, he'll give it about, I don't know how long I'm going to give you, probably an hour, maybe more, depends on what you want. Um, but talk about sales and, and how to close high ticket jobs. His average ticket, I think, is around $1,100, $1,200 per ticket. Um, and he's going to do $750,000 this year. Um, so he will be bringing fire and bringing value. Um, not just me and Donovan telling it, but another person saying, this is what you can do. Um, so that'll be awesome. Um, is it just me or is the volume a little light? Is it? I don't know. Maybe it's because I'm not screaming into it. So, um, I'm kind of sitting back far too. Here, does this help better? <laughs> um, but other than that, I hope everybody has a great night and, um, have a great weekend and we got a lot of stuff going on. I got soccer games going on. Um, so I got like three soccer games going on. I got water rescue going on this weekend. Um, so this weekend is going to be crazy, but hope you all have a great weekend and we'll talk at you later. If I can figure out how to shut it up.